Hi today everyone, my name is Christy and today my group and I would like to demonstrate the assessment of extraocular muscles. So let's begin on our patients. Hi today, my name is Christy Sulal, I'm a year 5 medical student and I've just been asked to do an examination of the muscles in your eyes. Is that okay with you? Yes. Can I have your full name on each please? Kazita Khan, 23. Okay Kazita, it's nice to meet you. So what I'd like you to do is follow my finger with your eyes without moving your head. Please let me know if you get any difficulty seeing or any pain at all, any blurred vision. The convergence reflex is a reflex action of the eyes in which the eyes draw inwards to focus on a near object. This involves the simultaneous contraction of the medial recti of the eyes bilaterally. To demonstrate this, an object will be moved from the distance and closer to the patient's face. Here's a closer view as the patient looks at the wall and then at the pen. Looks at the wall and then at the pen. We are now going to be focusing on the actions of the individual extraocular muscles. We will begin by looking at one of the muscles that moves the eye in the horizontal plane, the medial rectus. This muscle is supplied by the third cranial nerve, the oculomotor nerve, and it moves the eye medially. This movement is referred to as a deduction or adduction. A deduction involves the contraction of the agonist muscle, the medial rectus, and the relaxation of its antagonist, the lateral rectus. Also acting in the horizontal plane is the lateral rectus muscle. However, unlike most of the other extraocular muscles, this muscle is supplied by the sixth cranial nerve, the abducens nerve. Its action moves the eye laterally, which is referred to as abduction or abduction. Abduction involves the contraction of the lateral rectus and the relaxation of its antagonist, the medial rectus. When the eye is abducted to 23 degrees, the superior and inferior recti are aligned with the axis of the eye. The superior rectus is then able to elevate the abducted eye. Similarly, with the eye in abduction, the inferior rectus muscle is able to act purely to depress the eye. Both the superior and inferior recti are innervated by the third cranial nerve. Supplied by the fourth cranial nerve, the trochlear nerve, the superior oblique acts as a depressor of the eye when the muscle plane is aligned with the visual axis in extreme adduction. The eye is adducted or adducted and depressed. The inferior oblique muscle is supplied by the third cranial nerve. This muscle elevates the eye when it is adducted or moved nasally.
Nystagmus is an abnormal involuntary oscillation of the eyes that is rapid, rhythmic, and repetitious, with both eyes moving synchronously. It can be horizontal, vertical, rotatory, or multidirectional. Lid lag is where the upper lid lags behind the movement of the globe on down gaze. Third cranial nerve dysfunction can impair ocular motility, pupillary function, or both. It can present as diplopia, ptosis, and a characteristic down and out appearance. Fourth cranial nerve palsy causes vertical diplopia exacerbated when looking downwards and inwards, such as when reading or walking down the stairs. It is caused by microvascular damage from diabetes mellitus or hypertensive disease. Sixth cranial nerve palsy affects the lateral rectus muscle, impairing eye abduction. The eye may be slightly adducted when the patient looks straight ahead. The palsy may be secondary to nerve infarction, trauma, infection, or increased intracranial pressure.